Well, folks, me again. So this is going to be a story of how I became unashamed. Um, I think it started when the drugs and everything just hit rock bottom for me personally. I mean, literally when I was just a, in teenage years, I started to take, even after I started my first legitimate job, I would take like prescription painkillers just to ignore the pain in my feet and my back. I did not stop. I just got up the next day and just said, just give me some ibuprofen or whatever and just go with it. And that's the same. And also, I struggle with epilepsy. But this is Mountain Dew mixed with water. Um, I think it. I think when it all hit rock bottom, even after after Sierra wanted to call quits on the relationship, I mean, I didn't. I just honestly wanted to share Jesus with her, but um, she didn't. So, you know, when I was younger, I would belittle and berate her. And that, and around that same time, I wasn't very much of a Bible reader because I wasn't like, you know, how you see all these TV shows about left and right wing groups stereotyping, stereotyping my race as like these people that hold up these signs that say back in the 90s that say God is your enemy and all this crazy stuff. I'm like, that's not very Christ like at all. I mean, if they. In my eyes, when I, I was that age, I'm like, is this how they treat people in public? Then that don't sound very Christ-like at all. <sighs> then my own that one of my uncles is atheistic, but we won't dwell on that. I mean, you can come up with all the isms, 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 isms this, isms that, I mean. But y'all hipster halfwits will never stop the word of God. Sorry. I mean, even after my grandparents passed on within five years apart from each other, I mean, how much more can you, can your own heart take? Even after I graduated high school, I still had to attend to, just to find a job in the country basically after losing two of my best friends in car accidents one I knew even after I moved to Inman I mean, when I was younger, I, I went over to his place and played football with him. I mean, my, I mean, just look at my size. I would sack the living daylights. I mean, we would have, like, football games in the front yard, and I would sack the living daylights out of him.
I mean, I mean, I could have been on high school football team, but I just honestly had no interest in it. It could have been the NFL, the next NFL quarterback, but just never, never saw no interest in it. To be perfectly honest. Even after attending my best friend's funeral, it's like I was questioning my own life. I was, I basically just lashed out and just was just mad at the world. And I was beginning to think the Lord hated me, the Lord was punishing me. Basically, just fell into a deep, deep depression. <sighs> I mean, Even after my best friend's funeral, <sighs> I just felt around that same time I was just a loner. I basically just Treated Sierra like garbage, to say the least. And as the years progressed, the relationship between me and her fell apart. Then in the previous year, with only months apart, she wanted to call it quits, and I didn't, so we just both decided to split, and I lashed out at her, it's like, you can't do this to me, you can't do that to me, and she's like, and she's like, oh, don't take it personally. Hey, but we can still be friends. Yeah. Oh, but all the great love stories do have a dysfunctional boyfriends, don't they? Oh, some people are gonna ask. I think. I think after I hit rock bottom and the relationship between my mom, even after she decided to divorce my stepfather and everything, I mean, it's like. It was like, why do I even care anymore? I mean, I would argue with my mom. Yeah, but I, but me and her both were quick to forgive each other.
when did I decide to rededicate my life to Christ? <sighs> Let's just say, hey, when your mother refuses to admit that she committed adultery, then yeah, that happens. I'm like, Mom, just admit you got the devil in you. And she just basically just lied, lied, lied. I think a year. I think after Christmas when my mom said that I was never going to have kids or because of my disabilities, I'm like, mom, don't ever say never. And I also said, that hurts. So... After that, I just said, I said, Lord, I don't ask for much, but just please come into my heart. I will rededicate my entire life to you, you and you alone for the rest of my life. For as long as I live. And uh, just like that, all the stress and weight of the world just went away. I think when I heard Phil Robertson's quoting 15th Matthew, Don't trade evil for evil. I'm like, well, Lord, you got me. And it was like, can you try to be good? I've honestly never tried it before because I was bullied and picked on half of my life. And now I'm basically just read my Bible daily. But anyway, folks, hope y'all enjoy. Like, subscribe, follow me on Amino and TikTok and Discord. And God bless y'all. And I'll close out with silent prayer. Thank you, Father, for being there for us. I do pray, Father, for those watching on the other side of this here screen. And I also do, do pray for the, those I, I'm in contact with. with. And also for our nation going through this pandemic, Lord. And I pray that I would do two things. Be happy, happy, happy. And also look love our neighbors, Lord, through Jesus. Through Jesus, I pray. Amen.